Well, officials from the European Union are in Washington this week. They are working on an agreement with their American counterparts on issues of data security and terrorism, a very topical thing right now. Now, here's U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano on the talks today. Our discussions with the EU today uh, were to follow up on the agreement made by our leaders in Lisbon two weeks ago uh, to formulate a U.S.-EU cyber working group uh, and to really focus on um, issues uh, about intrusions into critical infrastructure, into financial markets, uh, and into other uh, areas uh, that are cyber dependent. Well, joining us right now from Washington is a key member of those talks. Vivian Redding serves as vice president of the European Commission and oversees justice rights and citizenship. Uh, Vivian, great to have you here with Matt and myself. Um, those meetings with uh, Attorney General Eric Holder and Janet Napolitano, how did they go today in your view? They go very well because we have uh, very strong relationships between uh, the counterparts of Europe and the counterparts in the United States. And it is important that we do so because the problems are very similar uh, on both sides of the Atlantic. So we better get the ends together, work together and enforce by working together our common security. Any areas of conflicts though with the United States that, that need a little bit of work here? You cannot uh, call it areas of conflict. We might not have the same view, for instance, on the protection of uh, personal data from one or to the other side of the Atlantic, but we will agree on uh, putting the personal data high on the agenda because it is necessary to have our security linked to, um, to the protection and to the rights of the citizens. The one cannot go without the other. They are the two coins, the other two parts of the same coin. Hey, Vivian, you know, when you talk about protecting the rights of citizens, Europe has traditionally been much more serious about protecting, protecting individual privacy rights than we have here in the U.S. See only the Patriot Act for evidence of that. Uh, is this uh, a, 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 an area of conflict, an area of, of discrepancy between uh, the European officials and the U.S.? I think that we have uh, the both uh, the same values. We might not always look at them in practice in the same way, and that comes also for history. You see, Europeans are very nervous about the protection of their personal data. Many of them have experienced dictatorships and non-freedom. So uh, freedom and uh, personal uh, valuable uh, data is uh, very high on the agenda in all European countries. Vivian, you know, I'm listening to our discussion and I'm thinking about Wiki leaks, which is so much in the news right now, now a lot of data um, that's come out. Uh, what's the EU's view on WikiLeaks and Julian Assange specifically? Well, uh, this is under uh, investigation, and I would not like very much to speak about something which is uh, sub judice, but uh, we only can say that what has come out of WikiLeaks uh, concerning the European leaders was not very new for us. You could find that everywhere in the European press and on the Internet already. But do you agree with kind of the pursuit of him uh, on these issues? If I could just get your thoughts on that. Well, uh, the question of WikiLeaks is under investigation, and I cannot uh, give you more information. Let, let me ask you about uh, gender equality. It's something uh, that, that you've championed. It's, it's also interesting, at least in my experience, that you would expect some European countries to be more liberated in this sense. But I know that in Germany there are fewer women represented on boards than there are uh, on corporate boards here in the U.S. Why is that? We do have a real problem with uh, gender equality uh, in the uh, economic world. And it is not a question of women versus men. It is a question of society and it is a question of economy. To give you some figures, 60% um, of the university graduates in Europe are women, but then all of a sudden in higher management, in top management and on the boards, you do not find the women again, which is very negative for the economic development development uh, because research all over the world comes to the same results. It is very clear that those companies which have an equilibrium between men and women do better in equity, they do better in sales, they do better in return on investment. So we need more women in. We, this is an untapped potential. We have mostly in terms of economic and financial crisis used that potential. We have formed 
haven't educated those women, we need them to take over also but, in decision making. But Vivian, how do you spur that kind of interaction? How do you spur that kind of representation without re resorting to uh, what a lot of people would see as uh, unfair measures like affirmative action? Uh, well, there are two ways to arrive to this, uh, to persuade the uh, businesses and the uh, world of the economy that it is good for income to have more women on the boards, to have more women on top uh, level uh, decision making. Uh, or if it does not work, and for the time being we see it does not really work, we have only one out of uh, ten uh, members of uh, the uh, listed company uh, boards uh, which are female well, then we might go to more executive methods and we might legislate in order to have quotas. Personally, I do not think quotas are a wonderful idea, but I very much like what quotas do. They augment the women on the boards, mm -hmm. they augment the women in top management. Vivian, we just have a few seconds left here, but I mean, I think this is a time where Europe's facing a lot of uh, issues. I think about the European debt crisis, uh, slowing the economy in, in some, uh, on the part of some of your members, is this now the time to be talking about these issues when we're facing those very tough economic and fiscal issues? Exactly, because we have uh, very well seen in our um, uh, scientific research that those companies with women on board do much better. And I give you one figure, 80% of the consumer decisions are taken by women. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go for sales and development of your economic benefit inside in a company, take women on board and you mm. will win. Well, I'm all for more women in boardrooms, so no doubt about that. It could change then the 80% of the consumer decisions if they're all working on the board. Potentially. And they won't be doing the shopping at home. Vivian Redding, thank you so much for joining us there in D.C.